Go into settings and turn the sensitivity way up. Because you're being ridiculous right now. Ayo, hey, hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Brotherhood Without Manners, your favorite full spoiler reread podcast of George R.R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series. Reading a Storm of Swords. As always, I'm your bombastic host, Zach, and this is my brother, Nate. Whoa, yeah, I'm pretty bombastic too, you know. Mm, I can be. Not with that intro. Sometimes. If Fuck. you've joined us before, you know what we do here. You know the gist. If you haven't, we're a full spoiler reread podcast of George R.R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series, Reading a Storm of Swords. That's right. I well know. done. I just said it twice for you. Come on. Did you? I wasn't paying attention. I don't listen to you when we're not recording. Or when we're recording. Yeah, that too. Are you going to... You gonna... Nope, I'm not going to contribute oh, all right, at all. Cool. I was just letting Sweet. you carry this. So, if you were with us last episode, we were reading Brand 2, Brandon Stark, got the Night of the Laughing Tree, which we did. Oh, my God. You dropped your notebook, and it was wonderful as Mira and Jojen are traveling north of the... Heading towards the wall with little Brandon Stark and Hodor. They came across a little in the cave. Eh, maybe. Yeah, potentially, likely. You know, mm. who knows? Brand seems to think so. And he was just being a little mysterious, but mentioned the Boltons are on the hunt, man. They're on the prowl up in the north. We also then, as you mentioned, got the Night of the Laughing Tree Which story. Which was most of the juice of the episode. Right. The, uh, the trip to the Isle of Faces. At Heron Hall, the right, Howland Reed meeting the Starks and them defending his honor and then the mysterious disappearance of said knight. But uh, this week, we are rejoining everyone's favorite little onion knight, Sir Davos Seaworth. This is Davos 3. Last we had left Davos, and actually it's kind of, I'm going to just group 1 and 2, Davos 1 and 2. Davos, we picked up after the Battle of Blackwater. He broke up on a little teeny spire in Blackwater Rush, thought he was going to die there, had the fevers, the shits, nothing was looking good for him. Managed to spy a ship, get its attention, and get picked up. Finds out that this ship belongs to his boy Salador San, who he immediately is brought to see after some recuperation time. And Davos declares his intent, his belief, his newfound faith that he has been kept alive by the mother herself to kill Melisandre. And that's exactly what he intends to do. Salador San talk tries to talk him out of it, saying, Dragonstone's not what we left it as, bro. Like, Stannis... Come away with me, my friend. Right, let's just fucking go. But Stannis is kind of scary now. He only listens to her, and men say she whispers in his ear saying dark things, and she burns anyone who says against her, and Davos is like, nah, I'm doing it. And with every intention to do so... He's arrested before he gets He a runs into Edric Storm. Which was cool. And that was a very chance, very important meeting. And then, yes, is promptly arrested as his intents are well known. So we pick up Davos 3 as he's been in this cell for quite a while. And it's warmer than it ought to be. Dark as well, as the only light is the torch that sits on the wall opposite his cell. And it's enough to light half the cell, but the half back half remains drenched in gloom, which is... A very important the symbolism in this scene of the light and the dark for Davos especially and then Melisandre is right. huge. He's sitting in this room that's literally half light, half dark, and that is that is the theme here, folks. Yeah, and then obviously there's the mention of the the warm walls, which is just similar to Winterfell. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, as well as we've gotten and we've discussed back in old uh, chapters from the previous books, the potential of Whatever may lie underneath Dragonstone, that there's clearly some hot springs blowing. The walls have yep, always been Davos a bit warmer. Davos thinks it gets things. warmer the deeper you go, and thinks perhaps the old tales are true. And Dragonstone was built with the stones of hell. Dude, Dragonstone is just a volcano. That's why the, that's why the Targaryens went there because they left Valyria's uh, Valyria's fucking volcano. They came to Dragonstone. I love for how the it's being volcano. painted though. It like Dragonstone's yeah. being painted as like Harrenhal. This gateway to this fucking terrifying hell. Yeah. place where Stannis, the shut-in king, is like now Amityville, man. getting his this fucking priestess, this cultist, whispering in his ear and right. twisting Every shit. Right. Every morning at three fifteen, he changes, right. Goes he's around waking the, up the and starts an burning and people. Starts yeah. Going crazy. And so he was sick when he had first arrived in his cell his cough had grown worse and fever had taken him but he recalls, which we do we were aware of before this yeah he, had a he cough, was very a sick he cough, was kind yeah. of recovering as he had gotten the ship to saladar sons but yeah he's gotten better since yeah, he believed he would die in the dark but dimly recalls young maester pylos looking in on him 
giving him hot broth and milk of the poppy, which made him sleep, and during which the bad blood was leached, <clears throat> excuse me, and before long he began to feel better than he had since originally setting sail up the Blackwater Rush. Two gailers attended him. Uh, one was Broad, Squat, and brought Davos porridge, so Davos named him Porridge, and sometimes he sweetened it with honey and a bit of, sal- or a bit of milk thrown in. And the other was older, stooped, and more sallow, and would bring Davos plates of meat or fish stew, and once even half of a lamprey pie, so Davos took to calling him Lamprey. Um, I put my, in my notes, it says that he made two new friends. Yeah, it reminds me of left and right, um, and, and I actually, I really like this part, because he names them that, not for lack of trying, Davos tries to converse with them, but, but they give nothing him else nothing. to refer, refer to them by. And uh, neither moon nor sun shine down here, so Davos marked the days with the meals that they brought. He did mention that sometimes porridge would give him sad looks, almost like he would he wants to talk to you, man, but right. it's his job. He's been ordered not to. Sorry. And honestly, I think that Davos respects that more anyway. Like, well, he, he understands. Because, yeah, he, he even says that, like, knowing that pleas of freedom or mercy wouldn't get him anywhere. He asks for news of the king, news of the war. How is the king? How are his sons? But, again, they can't talk to the prisoner, and yeah. Davos gets it. It's still, he's a lone man in a cell that is half thrown in darkness, and he wants someone to talk to anything, so he tries every time they come. But And it doesn't take long before the chapter blows the fuck up, because Mel shows up one night. Lady Mel. Well, he, he realizes uh, before Mel shows up that they're, they're, they don't mean to let him die here. They're keeping him alive, and that's... That don't bode well in old Davos Seaworth's mind, and he doesn't like that prospect at all. They're keeping him alive for a purpose, and you know he doesn't like that. I would imagine he's thinking that they plan on sacrificing him well, in some fashion. Well, he, he imagined he remembers Lord Sunglass right. and Sir Hubert R- uh, Rampton's sons, who had been in these same cells for a time and then were given to the pyre, and he's like, <laughs> great, I would sooner feed the crabs. Then feed the flames. Oh, I should have died. To, I should have died there. Um, which is my first. I want to really bring up. Where is the fire that he had a fucking chapter ago? Of I was given birth, rebirth for this mission, right? And it's gone. So that was definitely something I, I should have died up. there. I'd rather feed the crabs. My the flames. so my question is: Is it because there's no influence of the mother here? I, I think it's the, the presence, yes. Like, I, uh, there's nowhere for him to connect to his and god. And Melisandre is all encompassing. Right. Yeah. It's kind it's of, she's, her and she influence made sure is she, everywhere. They burned the seven right. there. There's, there's no, no yeah. outlet there. That was my thought, too. And so I feel like it's just that she's got Roller so heavily I immediately clouding. picture it as a, and it's funny with Melisandre and what we're talking about, like a candle in a giant storm. Davos' des- desire, devotion, was that one little candle being brought into a hurricane, and Melisandre's the hurricane who just pss, put that right out because that doesn't belong here. So I think that's what it is, is that it just got snuffed out, and Davos doesn't even realize it. Like it's. I don't think that it's snuffed out. I think that it doesn't have anything to... It doesn't have a conduit. He's She's blocking him from being able to... Well, so, that's I, I think it is snuffed out because we know Davos survives this. He leaves, and he's not on some mother-given mercy, mission he anymore. He gets Cedric Storm out the way he does. But and that's, so I think he it's dependent on where he's at, but I don't think his drive not, to kill her, yes. For, for the mother, but, the, the mother, the mother, that's what, where mainly is like he was in last chapter. He was like, the mother gave me life to do this one thing, and God damn it, I'm going to do it. And it's just to go from that to like, I should have died on that rock, and I'd rather feed I, the crabs. I think or... that it's going to come to when she, you know, mentions the poison and stuff. It's that he he feels hopeless. Like, she, he can't. I can't kill her. It doesn't matter what I – like, she knew. Now she's telling me that she saw it in the fire because she's going to tell him that, that nobody tattled on him. She just saw it. And so he's like, well, fuck. So I'm fucked. is he I'm fucking fucked. Davos basically here so, yeah, is I like the representation of, of her influence. Of the say, way technically, she's yes, you systematically did, you're right, she did out. snuff out yes. that. Because it's been 
there's nothing I can do to stop her, so why keep trying to kill right, her? Right, right, right. Yeah, happen. she she completely yeah. puts it. Yeah, into no, that. you're right. Through her power, through that the way she thing, does definitely. it, makes him question his best friend Salador San. Makes him question what the fuck is Stannis doing because he doesn't know. He's not in the know. And yeah, this this chapter to me is to show us Melisandre's true power. Because we learn in dance that she herself says it's mostly parlor tricks. This is her power. I mean, this insidious despair that will literally completely wipe out. I don't know because any... I feel like that drive is is still always there for him. He still plans to kill her when he's allowed. But at the moment, Stannis is had and his and he, that's all Melisandre needs. I and while we can sit here and say it's Melisandre, I think that he's got that devotion to his king supersedes his devotion to his god. And oh, for, so, for sure. But that's and so I think that he's still her plan. I still think he intends to kill her one day. That's what he would let, like at a, at his core. Yes, he wants to kill her. Even now, like in wins, he's just not around to do it. Mm. And especially once he burns Shireen, and she. He, is behind it. He's gonna. We'll have to lose see it. there, but I, I certainly think that this is meant to demonstrate. I mean, but the, for sure, the, right the, now the she's definitely. Mel- this is the clearest look we've had at how Melisandre truly works. Right. This is her power Let to me... get into mm-hmm. men in, in their hearts, in their head, and be like, "No, the mother ain't gonna help you. This is my land. These Dragonstone, the place where Davos's king rules. He is now thinking is actually carved from the stones of hell. That's what this place has become to him, and that's." A terrifying image because of the flames that she personifies, because of people get being given to it. Technically, he was they ne- none of them were ever fond of dragon stuff, right? And it was always this imposing thing. But and so, being in the cells, being in the heat, it's now taking on much more of the scary fairy tale right, sure. than it ever did because there's this flame priestess, and it's super interesting. Yeah. But. We'll get to uh, one night as he had finished supper. She shows up. <laughs> it's a it's a literal effect. He feels it. Yeah. A queer flush hits him. I imagine the torch fucking flickers and flares up Somehow, a little brighter. In some way, like, with, and that's it. Because she and I think that will, I one hundred percent is correct. Because she makes the threat. Would you like me to take away the torch? Oh. And I feel like she has made it brighter right now to. Give him that, like, that. Yeah. you like how bright Look this is. Look at what See happens when I'm is. here. Right. It's much yep. more friendly and warm and So inviting. she, of course, asks if all is well, if he if he wants for anything, and he says, my son, my king, I want for them, I lack for them, and he asks her if she's come to burn him. And this is, this is the meat and potatoes right here, this discussion right. of this chapter. She speaks on how awful his cell is, how dark it is down here, how terrible... And how the torch across his cell is the only thing standing between Davos and the darkness. And then the the truly evil fucking question, shall I put it out? At the same time, I mean, obviously evil, it's very much this twisted Teaching manipulation. A it's, it's a te- Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A, let like, me educate you. I'm going to force you into needing, needing my it. god. Mm-hmm. This is my god. And, like, no, it's fire. Like, yeah, it represents her god, but would you like me to put it out? See, this, no, this, because you need oh, my yeah. god. Oh, yeah, this clarifies to me. Melisandre is the one. I mean, sure, Stannis is king and given orders and such, and I'm sure he's he's not pleased with Davos at the moment if he's allowing him in the cell. Melisandre is the one who ordered per- Porridge and Lamprey to say, Nothing right. under any search. She wanted that isolation, Absolutely. that reliance on the light, because that um, will be the only thing he has, and she knew it. I feel like it would be a lot of fun to see Melisandre down in King's Landing playing the Game of Thrones. Could you imagine, like, her and Cersei, dude? Just And not just her and Cersei, but even her and Littlefinger and her and like I feel like she would be playing on a good well, level. Well, that's why like, no, where... that's why I mean like someone like Cersei. Oh, I feel like we would get, get schooled by. She now. would go, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. She and I don't, not even the school, just the the way that Mel would. Cersei twist would hate it. Or, she would, yeah. Cersei would be crawling out of her skin the whole fucking time because of Mel and the way right. she is, and it'd be great. I would love that exchange. And he he almost. He refuses to beg her, but he says, no, please, I need the torch. And she says, so you have come to love the fire, it would seem. And yeah, that's manipulation 101 of here's the one fucking thing that you have good in your life right now. And now 
it's associated to me and mine and what I represent, and I'm going to make it twist. And he says, and she says, I am like this torch on your night. Both of us are instruments of Rolor, made to keep the darkness at bay. Made, made to keep the darkness at bay. That's what she's equating either herself or all of the priests and priestesses of Lo- Rolor, but I feel like Mel is equating more of herself above the the, the regular Yeah, echelon. definitely, especially when you're considering if she's feeling as though she's I mean, getting she, higher or high or visions, more power right. or whatever it may be. And she, asks, uh, and she asks him, do you believe that now? And he says, no, you are the mother of darkness. I saw it under Storm's End when you birthed that abomination. And she, again, it's a good point. Shadows only live when given birth by light, which is one of my favorite descriptions. Is like because you think shadow and you're inherently like ooh dark magic, Whoa. but shadows yes. have to be I you really know like given light. light, and so I like that Rolor encompasses both but again, shadow and on that manipulation line. His cell is in comp- half shade, half, half and dark, half. and he's terrified at the thought of the the torch going out, but. Well, I suppose that's pure well, darkness. Well, that well because well, like that, shadow. and that's it. Is the back half of his sh- shell is good to her? That shadow, that's Rolor conceived. Right, right. All total darkness is right. great other yeah, realm. I yeah, and so that, it's yeah. that. It, but it's such an interesting. Like technically, she's right, but it's still like a shadow baby demon that killed Renly is fucking horrifying. Birthed by like, the power regardless of, blood, of what right. it's birthed by, light or not, it's still fucking scary. And uh, she's basically says that she would love to conceive another Right, child. but the, the king's not strong enough. He's too weak right his now. His fires burn low. Another might kill him. But if another were to take his place, and Davos now, is like, uh, no. Why was I under the impression, because I feel like this right here blatantly states otherwise, that it was only king's blood that could... Because uh, I believe the show is it just because King's, King's blood. blood is more powerful in, in even in the book because she does go after like Edric Storm and wants to sacrifice well, that's, him. Well, that's and my then, question here is why does she want another? Who's the target for another? I would love and to. And so yeah. maybe it's not a king that she wants dead at this point. So do you think that it do, the the so that the it could be weaker? Is the target affected is, right. by the Renly Baratheon in his camp. They need king. they need a King's blood right. Assassin. But if you're going after somebody a but little right, smaller, if she's just maybe going, a little finger who's hiding in the shadows, right. or not even he might be a little larger than right. But, Someone but to do with uh, Storm's End, perhaps, right. and that whole nonsense. Axel Florin, right? Uh, yeah, I would feel like it if she was willing to mate with Davos to create one. May unless maybe there's power in him now being like a turned believer. I don't know, but yeah, it's an interesting one because. You would think Stannis, the King's Blood, is what tied. So the I whole also thing like that it. she keeps calling it life fire and the King's fire, not blood. And obviously, you know, I think it's referencing the blood there, um, clearly. But she keeps also defining it as fire. And I just really like I know that Rolor and everything, but it just makes me think of the the Targaryens yeah. and like are they and the others who are. Like ice, right? Like and that's exactly. in their veins is and ice. So is it correlating the the priests of Rolor, the that thought to the Targaryens in some way, or is it? Do you think more of that epic battle, the fire and ice battle, that they're using the fire from the blood of these people? See, I don't know, because that's the interesting bit. Is we hear Mel like talk on on dragons and such like that briefly. But she doesn't ever really ruminate on Targaryens, and I would love to know her thought. Are they demonizers of the faith? Are they like? Well, because and that's I don't what's know if if they there is a red priest that is very clearly interested in right. Targaryens. More Quarrel more, more Quarrel and Quaith more, more and, and like well, she's not and she's not a red priest, but she's uh, there's just all sorts of people that are very interested in the Targaryens, and yeah, Macoro. Um, well, right, but then there's the, the red that, priest. To that in... question specifically, I don't know if to Rolor's followers what the Targaryens are. I like there's nothing really telling us that yet. You we just... have Thoros and like certain individuals that we know. Thoros is with Beric Dondarrion. He ain't fucking giving a fuck all shit about Daenerys Targaryen right, and right. her dragons. He's not 
saying that there are three dragons across the sea and I need to aid them. He's in not any going way. on about his Aura High shit right. either. He's and not... so it, I don't, I don't think the Targaryens are connected to Rolo. Well, I just think it's interesting that it's a a religion solely based on fire. Right, right, right. right. It would and make the sense. The Targaryens yeah. are pure, and so it. I'd be surprised to see that there's not some kind of a correlation there. I really down. hope that Melisandre gets to meet Daenerys, and I would like to see, see that and see sure. what Mel says about it and thinks about it. But she asks, and Davos wants absolutely nothing to do with conceiving a Fuck demon baby, of course, up. but she asks him why he clings to false gods. Open your eyes, Sir Knight. And he asks what it is you would have me see. And she says, I would have you see the way the world is made. The night is dark and full of terrors, the day bright and beautiful and full of hope. One is black, the other white. There is ice and there is fire, hate and love, bitter and sweet, male and female, pain and pleasure, winter and summer, evil and good, death and life. Everywhere opposites, everywhere the war. So, before continuing about the war bit, fuck. I had mentioned in Bran that I wanted to yeah. put a thought on hold to this one. I forgot about that. In Bran 2, I believe, is what we just read Brand last two, chapter. Yeah. Yep. In Bran 2, um, Jojen makes a line about if ice and fire can mate and something else. Hold on. I will actually pull it right up in my, my notes here. Right, because he had, they had mentioned the her liking mountains... And hating mountains. Right. And he was saying, well, why can't she hate them and love them? If fire and ice can ma- ma- uh, mate, he, I'm just trying to kill time. Cause yeah, I don't no, it's, the quote yeah. As you're looking for I'm it. I'm trying to find it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll uh, there it is. Be. If ice can burn, then love and hate can mate. Mountain or marsh, it makes no matter. The land is one. And so... That was the, the the last chapter, and now in this chapter, we're being told diametrically the opposite. It is a war. A war is being fought, and it's always been fought, they, and there's they no are way not they the can same. coexist. Ice and fire cannot yeah. mate. They cannot cr- procreate. They cannot ever cross. They are parallel lines that will forever be fucking going forward opposites each other. And then... Mel, yeah, so it's Mel's way like, of nah. thinking and Jojen's way of thinking. Both we've seen have legitimate power. Jojen has predicted that Bran is important and needs to go. We also are aware he will reach right. the, the, the tree. Blood Raven and Star has Train. a, yeah. There is Mel power there. is seeing Azora High, whether it's clearly not Stannis. We also believes. do know that while she is having visions, we've seen that, you know, and seen some of her magic through her point of view chapter that occurs. Um we also know she uses a lot of parlor tricks, parlor tricks, yeah. and glamours and flash powders, things like that. She has, however, glimpsed Bran, Bran and Blood Raven in her flames, right, and, and been John. terrified of them, right. Um, and so that, like, what who's, is who's what, right? what, right? Who's, what is what? And is that the war? Is, is it a war between Rolor and the Great Others? And if so. Is is there a good and is there so, a bad side? And that makes me want to call into question a lot of the stories, like the the knights, the king and queen, with which I've discussed a right. bit before. Like they can't mate. Is I, that like, does that mean that potentially that Stark was an Azor High at the time? And there's been multiple iterations over time that may not have needed to, or even it could have been his brother that came up and slayed him. Um, I. I don't know, man, because there's just so many different ways that it could go that is it supposed to be that they need to mate to, to coexist? I mean, it could even, that with Jojen's, uh, you know, if ice and, and uh, fire can, can mate, uh, that could even be alluding to the creation of the others, that uh, so the I was children of the say, forest had to create the others to defend against the Andals, and they I'm got out of control. It Danny is Azor High. John is going to take over as the Night King. They're going to get together forever as this undead couple, power couple, and it's going to cause the Great War Cycle to come to a Oh, you think it's a power stuff. couple, not a pact? Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe a pact that it leads to that. John being, goes like, up north. Yeah, goes up north, north and she she kind of keeps the something. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's know. just <laughs> it's it's obviously Martin knew what he was intending to do with having the Knight of the Laughing Tree as they're on their way north to the Wall. 
right before a chapter where the most Rolor-ific Rolorian is going to mm-hmm. be doing her Rolor thing and saying the exact, exact opposite, that these things cannot mix because they are so diametrically opposed. And it's just... Who, yeah, what, dude, who's his right fucking and wrong. chapter placement's just on point, yeah. man. And Always. so Davos is like, everywhere the war, what the fuck are you talking about? And she says, there are two Onion Knights. Do you think I crossed half the world to put yet another vain king on yet another empty throne? This war has waged since time began, and before it is done, all men must choose where they will stand. Is that her saying, I don't give a fuck about Stannis? I think it's her uh, saying... I really do think she's referring to Stannis here. I, I'm not... I don't actually give a fuck about putting him on the throne. That's not... Yes, that's what it's I need to do. preparing for the Great War. But that's what needs to happen in order for us to get ready for this. Right. Exactly. No, no. I think that's what it is. And she's and 100% I think telling that's him... that's Melisandre's big flaw, we'll find out, is that... She thinks it's... She skipped that first step. Right. She set her sights on Stannis and was like, got him, and then locked it in and she built and on that. And that's what's funny is because if she had stuck to this plan... The, like what she's saying right here, I think she was set on the Stannis is the Azor High, so I have to build him up. No, you do need to get this vain man on his path to claiming the Iron Throne in order to find John to weaken to it find for Azor Danny Ahai. or whatever. And so yeah. without without him going up north to stop the wildlings, right, right, and get, right. then you never would have found John. See, Azor yeah, because I'm a I'm a very firm believer. I don't believe Melisandre is evil or bad or Nor do I. a mustache twirling villain. I think she's misled Misguided. and isn't reading things right as she thinks. And so she's doing basically what any one of us who, you know, believes in a higher power. She's and, doing what the world is doing. Right. She's and bumbling her way through. Interpreting the things that she's given and is trying to do it. She's been given more power since she's been aiding Stannis and things are working and so why wouldn't she lean into it? And then I think, yeah, similar to the show... I think her fall is coming where she realizes I was I was wrong. Like, it wasn't Stannis, and I fucked up, and I don't know if I can correct it at this point because right. I had all that time that I wasted here. And it's this – everyone has – and I also think that everyone's going to have to choose is extremely that. Everyone's going to have to choose whether or not they're fighting for the side of the living because pretty can, soon – That would be very Martin about the whole thing, I think. It's funny because he's, he's always said that there's no – black and white characters they're all gray characters but he's going to force every one of these gray to characters make black to make a decision. black or white decision of ice or fire whether they stand with rolor the lord of light the heart of fire the god of flame and shadow or against him stands the great other whose name may not be spoken the lord of darkness the soul of ice the god of night and terror why can't his name be spoken i want to hear voldemort's name dude our choice is not this house or that. It is death we choose or life, light or darkness. Tell me, Davos Seaworth, does your heart burn with the shining light of Rolor, or is it black and cold and full of worms? And that right there is her big flaw, is, you know, you can be on the side of the living, as I think many of our here. I think someone like Jamie Lannister will be, as someone like obviously, you know, Jon Snow will be, I believe Danny will be, uh, stuff like that. Jamie's not going to be in it because he's serving some fucking god. Jamie's going to be in it because he wants humanity to survive and right. people to have, like, and that's her flaw is they don't need to choose to fight for light. For Rolor. Convicted to right. Rolor. They can just choose to do it for good and for I, he- And she's ha- like, you have to be passionate I with Rolor. I do think it's a very interesting analogy. Do you, does your heart burn with fire or is it... Black and ro- cold and full of worms. Full of worms. Dead. Decaying. Yeah, yeah right. The others. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Wh- whites. I just thought that was a very... I also think of Arya's worm that she'll oh, be yeah, plucking plucks out of the, out of the yeah, yeah. kindly man's face mm-hmm. and eating. Too much to his chagrin. Uh, and she reaches through the bars and lays three fingers on his left breast, breast as if to discern the truth of him by touching him. My heart is full of doubts, he says. And I, she, again, this is a part of what makes me think she's not evil. She's not, she sees that respect, always on, honest to the end. Uh, honest to the last, I'm glad yeah. you didn't lie. Even I would have known. Even in his day of darkness, you bitch. It is good you did not lie. Yeah, I would have known. Um... Do you, to me, this is the uh, 
the Inglorious Bastards scene. I don't know if you've actually seen that movie, I've but there's that. a fantastic scene where the Nazi interrogator played by uh, Christoph Waltz is um, casually sitting at a table interrogating people to find some of the Jewish that are living there, and he grabs one of the girls, and subtly he's checking her pulse as he grabs her wrist to see if it, she's got an elevated heart rate. And it's a very casual move. It doesn't seem aggressive. And it's a intelligently insidious tactic. I think that's kind of what Mel's doing here. She's it's meant to rate. almost seem like magic. Like, she, oh, she's touching me. She right. said he's going to know. But she's just she's touching his heart, his heart to rate. see if it's elevated, if he's intense right now. Yeah. And he's not because, like, I don't know what to do right here. Like, And I think it's just and that. And he's, he's got that internal thought, and he's... He doesn't. He doesn't believe in her. He still hasn't been t- swayed her way. She, he's not a follower of the Lord of Light. He also doesn't want to die because she, for some stupid reason, he mentioned that he doesn't want to be burned at the stake. Fuck that. Nobody she asks why. Why did you mean to kill me? And he tells that he says that he'll tell her if she tells him who betrayed him. And he thinks it could only have been Salador's son, but he's hoping against hope that it's not. And she says, "No one betrayed you, on the Knight." I saw your true purpose in my flames. And he says, well, if you can see the future in the flames, then why did we burn on the black water? My men, my ship, my sons, you gave them all to the flames. I was not there. Oh, I wasn't there. I could have saved y'all. I could have fixed everything. She says, you wrong me, Onion Knight. Those were no flames of mine. Had I been with you, your battle would have had a different ending. But his grace was surrounded by unbelievers, and his pride proved stronger than his faith. His punishment was grievous, but he has learned from his mistake. And he thinks, Davos thinks, were my sons no more than a lesson for a king then. Mm. A king that he still remains unfallible to. Just... Fuck, dude. So she goes on. The war continues, Davos Seaworth. Stannis is the Lord's chosen, the warrior of fire. I have seen him leading the fight against the dark, and the flames do not lie. So she's seeing John already. Or at least what we think come future chapters. I mean, no, I, I wouldn't. Like, maybe Stannis survives what's happening in winds the this battle that's about to pop off pretty much as soon as we pick up winds with him and the boltons and phrase and the mandalays and all that shit right. maybe he's the one who's dies first against the others he's the one who's the the the, the one who fucking raises the alarm and right. is like oh, shit. Stannis oh, was murdered here. by a bunch of zombies Stannis' oh, whole oh. fucking army was yeah. just killed by the fucking others there. Stannis' army is now heading south right Stan- <laughs> like Stannis' army has and that's Fucking Stannis, like, is another now at the fucking... Tell me that wouldn't like, be fucking sick. Right, Stannis it comes sucked, as a but white like, walker. Because I really like Stannis. But yeah, a no, like, I, I could walker. see her having a vision of him in the flames fighting in the dark. But I don't think it's, that that equates yeah. to Azor Ahai yet. Sure. And I think she's misreading that. And she says that it's written in prophecy as well. When the Red Star bleeds and darkness gathers... Azor Ahai shall be born again amidst salt and smoke to wake dragons out of stone. Stannis Baratheon is Azor Ahai reborn, she says. So, the prophecy, of course, prophecy. And she says, you doubt me even now, yet you have served him all the same and will serve him again. You gonna do it again? I'll leave you here to think, and because Rolor is the source of all that is good, I will leave the torch. And then she's gone. putting that emphasis on... Your one good thing is that torch, and that is the god that I that you right. you serve, and you're gonna serve. You're gonna you, serve. You serve. Yeah, 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 you're, yeah. you're just gonna serve. You're gonna like it. You're gonna like it. You're gonna like it. You're gonna hate it, but you're gonna like it. And that's that for Melisandre. Yeah, she's gone. Davos does think on what she says. He uh, can't deny the source of her power. He had seen the shadow that she had birthed. I'm trying to end it early, and she knew things. What? You tried to. You said that was it for Davos chapter. No, I said that was it for Melisandre because oh. we still have to do the Florence. Okay. I'm. Don't even try and throw me under I, the bus, I, motherfucker. You fucking... open your open your ears. She had. She knew things. She had no way of knowing. And he's very glad that Salad didn't betray him. You know who else knows things? They have no reason to know them. A little girl down south on the border of Dorne. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's true. Just saying. He watches the torch for a while, trying to see beyond it, trying to see into the flames as Melisandre does, but can't. And so he curls up and sleeps. And about three-ish days later, he hears a voice as Porridge leads two guards who drag over the voice's owner, yeah. Sir Axel Florent. No, so uh, Axel Florent is, is one of the guards walking with them, bringing his brother, Alistair Florent. Jeez. And Zach doesn't know his shit. Get it to fucking together. You you, you host just <laughs> found the fucking I know my piece notes. of extra notage in your notebook at the end it. of the fucking chapter. It. So don't talk to me <laughs> about the one mistake. So uh, Alistair was Stannis' hand. And he gets tossed into the cell with Davos. He's demanding to see the queen, yeah, and he's fucking nah. And uh, Axel says to let the tra- traitors enjoy each other's company. Which, fuck you, Axel. You, fuck yeah. you, you fucking asshole. And Davos immediately marks him as who he is and catches him, but he pulls off of Davos and begins demanding to see the king on the king's hand. And then he slides down the door defeated as they don't listen. And so... Alistair apologizes for his appearance. All of his chests were lost when the Lannisters overran their camp. So no doubt some cook or groom is probably wearing his, well, noble garb now. But war has its horrors, as all men know. And we get to see the, like, we, from Davos's point of view, see the pompous arrogance of this stupid fuck. And No doubt you suffered losses as well, Sir Davos. Yeah. My ship, all of my men, four of my sons... All right, dude. No. He's up there, Davos. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> and uh, Florence says, may the Lord of Light lead them through the darkness to a better world. <sighs> even, a be- even a follower right. of the, the of Somebody who's trying to go against, like, even fucking Florent, who's now in a cell. Like, he's preaching the, the fucking right. Kool-Aid. Yeah. And <laughs> Davos says, may the father, well, thinks, may the father judge them justly and the mother grant them mercy. But he keeps it to himself, as the Seven had no place on Dragonstone now. Right. And that, I think, right there pertains to what we were saying. Of With Melisandre yeah, leaves no room, it. and there's no room for the Seven. Pinch that candle. But Alistair continues that his own son is safe at Brightwater, but he did lose a nephew on the Fury, Sir Imri. Mm-hmm. And Davos recalls that it had been Sir Imri who led them blindly up the Blackwater Rush, paying no heed to the stone towers at the river mouth. His Dav- Davos' own son, Merrick, was commander, or master, sorry, on the Fury. And asks if there were any survivors. Nope. Anyone that was, uh, that any of Stannis' bannermen, most of them were captured uh, at yep. the battle and forced to bend the knee to Joffrey. Everyone else was fucking dead, man. The war itself was lost that day, and Davos realizes that this man is defeated. Right, which is how he goes in to tell him that he's been condemned a traitor. He tried, he did write a fucking letter to King's Landing offering a peace treaty. And oh, so, granted, I think that that would be just an adorable little power couple, Shireen and Tommen. Fucking what? Little kittens and badass Shireen running King's Landing? Yeah, but, but I mean, he, it's. What a right. fucking idiot, dude! Like, I, so he writes ter- he wrote terms to Tywin that Stannis would rescind his claim on the throne. <clears throat> Strike fucking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're dumb. That's never gonna fucking happen. So, right. what? Right. And then uh, he'd take back all he said of Joffrey's bastardry on condition that he was accepted into the king's peace and confirmed Lord of Storms End and Dragonstone. <clears throat> Tywin's not going to allow any of that after the shit that's occurred at this what point. What person in their right fucking mind is going to go, yeah, okay, King's a bastard. Never mind, y'all. Uh, just kidding, guys. Sorry. I was. It was a really bad joke. It was and... a meme. It was a meme, guys. Right. Just kidding. Just. just... And <laughs> I offered to seal the bargain by wedding Shireen to Tommen. And Davos is like, I see your reasoning. You think the war is lost, so you think these are good terms. But how did the king respond? And... Alistair says, he's always with the Red Woman, and he's not in his right mind. Stone dragons. Madness. Did we learn nothing from Summer Hall? No good comes from these dreams of dragons. This way was better. The hand speaks with the king's voice. The reference to Summer Hall gave me pause. Wait, because they're talking about stone dragons. Waking and we've the stones right? of Sora High. Is it? Is that what we're talking about her? Because that sounds like some fucking shit going um, on in, in here in Dragonstone. Summerhall wasn't located at a volcano. Right. Um, 
if we get Summer Hall 2.0 at Dragonstone. Super Summer Hall? Super, su- <laughs> super Summer Hall. Super Summer Hall. This summer, Super Summer Hall. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that's a terrifying thought. And Badavo says, not in this, the hand don't speak with the king's voice. Stannis won't yield so long as he knows his claim is just. Tommen was born of incest, same as Joffrey, and would Stannis would sooner see Shireen dead than wed to that. <laughs> Is that a little bit of for Shut Shut up. Up. Exactly. Shut up. Davos himself says that he would sooner see his daughter dead uh, than... Is that just a little bit of... No. A little scary foreshadowing there? Confirmation. And Alistair says he has no choice. And Davos says, you are wrong. He can choose to die a king. And <laughs> Alistair says, and us with us. Us with him. Is that what you want? And Davos says, no, but I am a king's man. And will make no peace without his leave. And Sir Alistair begins to weep. I mean, he's just... I Chapter it closed, but Alistair's just defeated, man. Yeah. Like, he's scared. He doesn't know what the fuck's going and on. And then we get, like, it's funny, because Davos has been in here for a bit. Yeah, a good bit. Davos is a Alistair knows exactly how long he's been in there for, roughly. Yeah. Exactly roughly, you know. Exactly uh, roughly. He... And yet he sees that this motherfucker is just... Speaking some truths right. at me right Davos now. Davos hasn't even been broken by this yet. Yeah. And he's and it's that reverse where Alistair must be thinking he's in Davos' position of like, I'm the only fucking sane person on this island. I'm not the one spewing but like Alistair's drinking the Kool-Aid, but now he's looking at Davos like, oh my god, he's fucking buying into Stannis' bullshit too. Like, will no one see reason? And it's these two the swap dichotomies roles, yeah. of like Davos but, is sitting here like I'm the only one not drinking the so, Red God Kool-Aid. Now here's my next question. Visualizing this, Alistair was leaning against the the door because he slid down defeated. Yeah. One sitting in the dark shadow, the other one yeah, yeah, sitting yeah. in the light. They're in those opposite sides. And so I just really like that, again... The follower of the Lord of Light sitting in the light is the one that's defeated, and the one hiding in the shadows. Well, I, and uh, in that comparison, there we do know that, like so far, the shadow beings are the ones that are active. The shadow killed Renly, right? And so, like Alistair, almost seems to play more the like in the light there, more of the lordly, the Game of Thrones. Right, whereas right. Davos is it's, the shadow, the one who's out know, in the field, right. out there doing things. He, and, he's known for traveling. Yeah, in the light, it's and that specific. He moves like a shadow. Like, right, Davos himself is basically badass. the a shadow creature right. incarnate, man. And, uh, that's... yeah, I think when the time comes, that's what's what's going to be interesting is who on the light can be broken down as being light and shadow. And I think that's going to be people like Bran, Arya, like those darker, grayer characters. Right, but, but they can be shadows right. as opposed to evil. And I just, yeah, I really like the way Martin here is saying that. Whether you're worshipping a god, whether you're worshipping a king, zealotry can be dangerous, regardless. Right. Like too much too much of something is never a good thing. And with Davos, with Alistair Florent, with Melisande, that's all we're seeing here is no matter what, even Davos himself, someone you're drinking the fucking Kool-Aid if you're in the Stannis camp somewhere. You're either drinking the Red God Kool-Aid or you're drinking the Stannis Kool-Aid and even Davos is judging this man for the Red God, not realizing that, like, yeah, I'm totally willing to die because Stannis is stubborn. <laughs> and so it's it's dope. And that was, it's such a good chapter. It's a but great chapter. we'll convene our small chat council. Like, council? Yeah. We'll and go get there. some inductees and shit. Wonderful. Welcome to the small council. I couldn't think of a good intro. Oh, you were so, perturbed. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to think of something clever or funny, and it just didn't happen. Yeah, you failed so. at that. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate mm-hmm. it. So this is the chance to give our inductees. If you've written in to us, we have your inductees ready. Do you have an inductee ready to go, Zach? Fuck, yes, I do. Mine's got to just go to Melisandre, because, like, damn, girl, you ain't even king, and you're doing it. Like, she's got an island on lock, dude. Like, yeah, dude. And I've never realized the oppressive nature of it before with looking at Davos looking crazy fiery passionate burning devout mother mission gonna kill her to just poop gone nothing and it's not 
he's not lifeless. He's not listless. He's not defeated like he's, Alistair he, Florin. Right. He's still like, you know, he yeah, has a fire in him. He has the fight. The, I need to be here for uh, Stannis. The life fight, right. like she called it. Like, he's still just, got that spark. But that that devotion to the mother, that I'm on a mother inspired mission, given life by the mother to do this, is gone. And that to me just speaks of Mel's power. That's her true power, is that she's able to influence men quite quite well and knows how to break them both heart and mind and so fucking mel because i mean that and she comes on page and there's a literal like effect that happens where it gets warmer yeah my page actually gets brighter right when i turn the page to mel yeah, it does a little whoosh. Whoosh. yeah it's cool it's like the wand in harry potter when he grabs a hold of the wand for the first time and there's like a spotlight and swirls of dust what's your inductee him. my inductee is going to porridge porridge because what a badass dude like he's been instructed to not you do not speak to this motherfucker at all they didn't tell me I can't sweeten up his porridge with a little bit of honey. Or some milk. Can't throw in a little bit of sweet milk in there. <laughs> Fuck yeah, porridge, for keeping our homeboy at least a teensy bit comfy and cleaning his shit pail because somebody's got to do it. That's true. So, porridge for being a boy, man. Thanks a lot, guy. Porridge we appreciate and Mel it. in the Brotherhood. Yeah, so we also, of course, got some inductees from our lovely listeners. Uh, you want to go first or want me to go first? Yeah, we have Karen over here who... Uh, Mainly, Karen's just a little perturbed how uh, the fudge and fudge that Melisandre could ever look at Stannis and be like, yep, that's Azor High." But her inductee is going to Salador San yes. for not betraying her man Davos. I'm sure he'll have some amazing stories to share with the Brotherhood. Yours in ice and fire, Karen. Karen, as always, appreciate your emails, I appreciate your inductees, it. and yes, Can the I tell you how, how non-betrayal happy I am. Yes. of Salador San To hear is... that Sally's a great person yeah. and he's not a piece of shit that sold out his best pal right. was just super... Mm, fa- yeah, faith in right. Westeros. So we also received. got to write in from our wonderful and favorite French fry, Julian. Um, he, I think, will like this episode because we do a lot of talking about Mel and the Great Others and the Great War. And he, in his email, mentioned how that that wasn't prominent in the show. He wasn't, th- you know, there wasn't much intention. We didn't know what the fuck she was doing or why. It was kind of like, here's her doing some cool mysticism shit. She's a creepy old witch. Ah! But yeah, especially if you're, because I know Julian hasn't quite read some of the feasts, I think, and uh, dance stuff with John, and seeing the glamours and what's going on with Mance Raider and uh, Bones is that, is that, is that, I for, I for Rattleshirt. Say. Rattleshirt, that's the guy. Yeah. Bones. Bones. That's from our D and D campaign. Bones. Uh, anyway, his inductee is going to the torch. The glimpse of hope for Davos, which ironically is also the symbol for Rolor, Melisandre is happy to use against him. Valar Torcheris. Thank you, Julian. Yeah, the fucking torch. It's Davos' uh, peach. Great man. inductee. That and, you know, we're the Brotherhood Without Manners. We live in a lot of caves, so an extra torch is never a bad thing to have down here in our in our small council chambers. Sure, and then we, uh, we real quick, we have to posthumously, uh, we got an inductee from Corey for Brand 2, which... We didn't get... We skipped it, in man. time. Well, we didn't skip I it. I think we skipped it. We might have skipped it. Sorry, Sorry Corey. Corey. No, I think anyway, he sent it a little uh, bit. He would, one, like to thank Mira for the blue balls. Uh, tell us more about the green men on the island. Yeah. And, what the fuck? Uh, he, his inductee <laughs> is the tourney at Hall for so many great tales that came from this event. The mystery night. Jamie's entering the Kingsguard. Lyanna and Rhaegar hooking up. Rhaegar coop meeting and probably much more that I can't remember. Cheers from the Dreadfort Quarry. Thank you, my Did friend. Did we even touch on the coop meeting? We talked like, about it briefly. quite extensively. Oh, yes, yes, after, yes, I mean, yes, I yes, yes, yes. God, um, I love it. I fucking love yeah, it. Yeah, no, thank you, Corey. We wanted to get that one in here, so we decided to slip it in at the end of Davos. Next chapter, we're going to be reading Johnny Boy 3. 3. I believe. Yeah. Uh, John, cave sex. Yeah, cave fucking. Cave sex. Um, pretty much exclusively cave fucking. Cave sex. Uh, Hashtag cave sex. <laughs> you can no, expect that pretty much We all also episode. get, what is it, a Grendel? Is that, I have to... Check the chapter. John's but getting a little grundle. He's getting a little grundle. <laughs> uh, grundle, yeah. Yeah, and the, the cave children. The cave children, which is going to be a lot of fun to talk about. Another what's going on there. Story. Yeah, back to back. Three. Well, well, we didn't get the stories back in the mail, back. but you got to figure out how that works. <laughs> Especially in cave sex. B2B. Cave sex, back, back to back. back. Um, 
All right. The we'll stories are going to be a blast. Get us here in Dr. East for John 3. After that, we're reading Daenerys 3? Is Daenerys it Danny or and the, Yes, Daenerys and then Sansa. I want Actually, to. is it Danny 2? It's Danny 3. Danny 3. Yes. Uh, and First one. We yeah. know in that one, the plus of pride is going to be fucking exploding. So, Fuck yeah. Yes. Uh, inductees for John 3, Danny 3. And then Sansa, whatever. And then Sansa, whatever. We'll give you that number next We'll episode. catch you on the flippity flop. <laughs> write uh, us in check at out all our, sorts of stuff. Our Patreon. We love you, Patreon members. We have uh, Kristen, I believe, just joined recently, and that's cool. We love you guys over on the Patreon. We just got a new Dunk episode up there, Dunkin' Egg. The first part of the first of the three short stories. Right. Um, Patreon.com slash without manners. You can also email us without manners, brotherhood at gmail.com. We have our Facebook group, Facebook.com slash brotherhood podcast. Our website, brotherhoodwithout.com. I'm on Twitter at manners without. Zach's on Twitter at carstark92. There's an Instagram at manners without. Check out all those cool places. Leave us the reviews. Please leave us reviews. That'd be cool. If you do it on Podchaser, you can get half of a donation or some shit. They're donating to Meals on Wheels for every review. So go go to Podchaser and leave reviews, man. It's cool. We leave links in the thing. What's the what's that called? The I don't know. Matt Colville calls it the doobly doo. That was what I was was coming to my mind. So we'll we'll just reference him that time and give him credit for the doobly doo. Yeah. Check the links there. Leave us reviews. Check we out love Matt you. Colville. Yeah. Check out Matt Colville. He's awesome. <laughs> um, catch you on the next one. Valid Harris. Peace. <laughs>